likes to invent words, likes to neologize, and I learned from him the word Wikidemic. He's a Wikipedian and an academic. He's held posts in Malta, in three different institutions in New York, and is now, if we get this right, Director of Research at the University of Hull's School of Arts and New Media. Um, and Tony Science may be uh, unique among the speakers, we have to, I haven't done, but in being notable meaning having a Wikipedia article about him in English language and Maltese language Wikipedia. I don't know if you might search for the speaker's name. But I'll hand over to Tony Sam. <laughs> okay. I was getting worried about uh, following that up. So uh, I, I hope your expectations aren't too raised. Can everybody hear me at the back? Though I don't need a mic, do I? Okay, thank you. Um, all right, let's see, let's see how this goes. I gave a, a version of this presentation in India last November, where I was invited, uh, or rather uh, sponsored by uh, uh, the Wikimedia UK chapter uh, to attend. And uh, so this is how my uh, formal relationship with the uh, Wikimedia UK chapter started really. And I hope this is tailored for, for uh, this audience, which is uh, the somewhat different from having 800 people in the convocation hall at the University of Mumbai, which is, which is what we experienced there. So, um, this is a slide that some of my students made, and I, I have a feeling it's plagiarized. But I, 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 haven't, I, haven't, been, I haven't been able to, to find the actual source uh, for it yet. Um, and it's essentially questions. It's a set of questions that, that relates to to uh, thinking about Wikipedia, particularly in higher education. <coughs> um, so, you know, and, and we spend lots of time, I was gonna say waste lots of time, but let's say spend lots of time dealing with, with some of these questions. And some of them will come up in, uh, in the course uh, of my talk here, but uh, none perhaps as much as this one. This is not plagiarized, I made that. And for my photoshopping skills. <laughs> um, and this is what I was told and came to believe when I first started engaging with Wikipedia on a professional level in higher education. That Wikipedia is the devil. And in essence, the golden rule, you know, you see it written there, you know, do not quote Wikipedia unless you're writing about the significant wiki project and or you want to compare its contents with those in a scholarly source, such as a book, an article, or an article in an academic journal. Uh, we all know this idea of not quoting from other encyclopedias. Uh, and, and in fact, what I really encourage students to do, uh, rather than not quote from Wikipedia, or just not quote from Wikipedia, is to use it, actually, as a, as a, as a springboard for further research. So if you will, as a pointer to, to where to go to next. Um, this is something that uh, uh, I also mentioned to them. Uh, that uh, here's a quote from Jimmy Wells, who is the co-founder of uh, Wikimedia, and uh, you you uh, well, can read this for yourself. And uh, uh, this is not plagiarized. This, these are more or less his actual words, and there's a, there's a source for it down there, and and everything. So uh, I'll give you a, a few seconds to to read this, and uh, and you can see that you know well, it, believe it or not, this has been given at the presentation as a reason why students should not use Wikipedia at all at university. Um, but anyway, I think what we really need to do as academics, and, and what I've been uh, trying to do uh, for the last two or three years, is to ensure that our students uh, are able to do four things. Uh, the first is to discover ways to produce uh, data on the internet rather than just consume it. So, you know, this, this whole Web2 ideology, basically, of that we're all now producers and not just consumers of, of the stuff that's on the internet. Um, understand how a wiki really works. So, really understand online collaboration, understand, you know, concepts like crowdsourcing and, and, and such things. Um, something that was also mentioned earlier today uh, by one of the presenters, forgive me, I, I, it, it escapes me who it was specifically, but this idea of, of comprehending different uh, uh, viewpoints, right? The difference between something that's subjective and something that's objective, to put it in very concrete terms. And also then, this idea of learning to distinguish between online sources, I wouldn't call them good or bad, 
I would call them reliable, less reliable, or unreliable, rather, you know, because, well, some people worship the devil, don't they? So, for them, is that bad or good? Um, so, if we, if we take things one step further, and look at things like study skills, then, and what we're really looking at, you know, these correspond to five uh, very essential study skills that, that all undergraduate students, at least, uh, from my experience, have, have um, a quest uh, for, uh, are on a quest for. This is uh, basic technical proficiency, right? Particularly with the read write web, as I mentioned. Uh, critical thinking, of course, uh, and this idea of, of critical thinking uh, comes back in, in all sorts of, of shapes and forms. Writing, uh, where we try to uh, make sense of the difference between objectivity, particularly, and neutrality, this idea of the neutral point of view that we find in, in Wikipedia. Uh, research skills, especially uh, referencing, uh, and also collaboration and interaction, uh, which is something that I spend quite a bit of time with, as I hope I'll have time uh, to explain further on. So earlier, during uh, the intervention I made during uh, Lee's excellent uh, keynote earlier this morning, I mentioned the five pillars. And here are the five pillars for uh, those of you who are not familiar uh, with them. Uh, they are, if you will, the four noble truths uh, of Wikipedia or whatever, the Ten Commandments, but there's only five of them, so they're called the five pillars. Um, and some of them are self-evident. Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. Wikipedia has a neutral point of view. Wikipedia is free content. Uh, Wikipedia has a code of conduct. And the last one, which in essence overturns them all, which is my favorite really. Uh, but, you know, there's been countless hours of discussion about this in places like uh, Wikimania, this, this annual conference, and all sorts of other places, including on Wikipedia itself and on the, on the discussion talk page for the, the five pillars itself. So if you're really interested in this stuff, uh, go look it up. So I'm not particularly excited about it. I'm excited about what our students get or don't get from all this. And that is in, in you know, setting an assignment. And uh, for the most part, I, I would say you could use a least term, which is to say that this is a classic assignment, where we're, we're asking students to create a page about something, or asking them to edit an existing uh, uh, Wikipedia page about something. Uh, but there, there's more to it than that, as you'll see uh, when I come to what the assessment criteria are in a minute. Uh, the article the subject choices clearly depend on the course material, but the content is given more importance when the assignment is for a what I call non-internet studies class. And you'll see what I mean. I mean, I teach at the School of Arts and New Media. And uh, we have a, a number of, of courses. It's a, it's a multidisciplinary and an interdisciplinary uh, environment. Um, and we have st students who are studying art degrees, and we have students who are studying science degrees, and ones who are somewhere in between. Um, well, I think if I talk about the assessment criteria, this will help me explain some of these, the, these differences in terms of the content. So there are four assessment criteria, regardless of whether we have a student doing a BSc in web design and development, or we have a student doing a BA in theater and performance. Right? That, that doesn't really make a difference. We always have these four assessment criteria. What changes is the values. And what I've put here are probably the averages. Uh, uh, so for content, we give 20%, that is to say the, the quality of the writing. And we, we see this from the contributions that the students make to the selected page or pages. Well, we also see this from their user page. No. Um, the, the next uh, thing we go for is an understanding. That is to say, an understanding of what needs to be done. So do they understand the conventions and the expectations of, of Wikipedia? This includes particularly things like formatting, you know, things like links and, and referencing, uh, particularly. Uh, and so that's given roughly 30%. Uh, uh, Engagement. And this is normally always the highest, even though there, there was a comment from, uh, from the floor uh, this morning, I think, about the, this not necessarily being something uh, we want to give so much weight to when we're doing this classic assessment, uh, because the content is more important. 
I tend to think that, you know, uh, in terms of understanding collaboration and in terms of understanding the rewrite web and, and these kinds of things, engagement is essential as to say the level of engagement with other Wikipedians, that you're not, you know, um, that working on your own, but you are contributing to something that we are all potentially working on uh, together. So we assess this through the quality of information on your user page. Do you just tell us your name and who you are? Or do you, do you try to do other things? Do you uh, try to uh, uh, tell us which tribes you belong to, uh, as it were, and, and see about networking <coughs> with other people uh, with similar interests uh, to yours? As well as contributions to talk page or discussion, discussion pages, not just for uh, the page that uh, you're uh, working on as a student, but also other pages and other people's pages. Uh, and so on and, and, and so forth. And then uh, clearly at the end of the assignment, uh, the students are asked to give a, a presentation and for the quality of that presentation, where they talk about these uh, other three other elements, uh, we also give them another 10%. So roughly, this is how it goes. You know, sometimes the content is given a little more weight. Sometimes, you know, the understanding is, is given a little less weight. It, it depends, as I said, on uh, what the module is, right? Before I get to what particular uh, degrees and programs and modules we deal with, I, I want to tell you a little more about what we teach in, in these modules. And I say, I say we because I haven't been doing this alone. Uh, I, I have had uh, two PhD students who are working with me uh, <coughs> involved in delivering some of these workshops. I've had a colleague who's, who's a, a lecturer in theater and performance involved in, in delivering uh, these assignments. Uh, and so in roughly two sessions is what we do. Sometimes we do three, sometimes we do one and a bit. Uh, but I've split them here over two workshops. We teach the basics, so you know, registering and, 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 and basic wiki text, uh, uh, the, building your user page. Uh, having talk pages and what talk page is on, on talk pages, this kind of thing. This lovely thing that was introduced recently called the tree house, where uh, where uh, newbies can get help, yeah, and uh, and um, uh, drink some virtual tea if you will, uh, or smoke it if they prefer it that way. Whatever, you know, it's virtual. Who cares? Uh, using the watch list, yeah, which is one of the features that um, uh, media with the installations, regardless of whether they're from the Wikimedia Foundation or not, have you know, this watch list where you have a set of favorite pages, if you will, that you can, that you can watch. So that's, that's what we do in the first workshop, I'm fairly, fairly manageable, usually about a, a couple of hours or so. In the second workshop, we uh, normally talk about uh, citations and references through what uh, Wikipedia refers to as uh, verifiability. Um, then um, most students, uh, find this in quite amusing is uh, Wikipedia's manual style, which as has been observed by other speakers this morning is uh, somewhat different from the Chicago uh, manual style, for example, or the Harvard manual style. Um, and then we spend quite a bit of time uh, thinking about refining contributions, what it means to make a contribution to Wikipedia that's, that's particularly useful. Uh, so it's not just the content, but also the mechanics of it, right? So things like cross-linking. Yeah, if, if you're writing uh, an article about uh, something that there are already other pages about on Wikipedia, make sure that you link to them and, and go to those pages and see that they link back to you if they're already using the phrase or the name that, that you're working on. And, and having categories uh, is, is another way to, to uh, bring in some of this uh, utility, if you will, of contributions. The final thing we most of the time make sure we uh, uh, we have time for is to explore uh, the very complicated issue that is uploading images to Wikipedia. And uh, the reason it's, it's so complicated is, uh, well, firstly, many of the students find it hard to understand how you're not really uploading the images to Wikipedia, but you're uploading them to the, 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 the Wikipedia Commons. And so that is the first thing that, that they kind of have a hard time understanding. Then explaining this other thing that is some rights reserved rather than all rights reserved or no rights reserved. What? Creative Commons? Why would you want to do that? So that in itself, you know, turns into a whole thing. And then, uh, the, anyway, you can imagine all sorts of things. What uh, constitutes an appropriate image and what doesn't constitute an appropriate image. Uh, anyway. 
So that, in essence, is all we, all we really do. Um, I'll, I'll bring this to a close, so, so I have time for, for some of your questions, by telling you roughly, you know, in a couple of minutes or so, what we've been working on. Uh, started in, in 2009, 2010, uh, at the University of Hull Scarborough campus. And this was a, a strange time to start because I, I had just been given research leave. And so I sent the assignment and left. So I don't really know what happened because I was writing a book that was completely unrelated to any of this stuff and I refused to have anything to do with it. Who cares? It's the internet, you know? <laughs> have you seen all these pictures with, with cats on them? <laughs> so anyway. Uh, and this was on, on a module called Applied Interactive Theatre 2, uh, which is for our, our uh, theatre performance uh, students in their third year. Uh, it, as, the, as the name implies, you know, it, it relates to, to even to engagement with the internet in relation to theatre performance. So uh, it's, it's quite uh, an apt module to, to integrate this into. Um, the, the other one that I then introduced it to when I came back from my research leave, uh, the AHRC was good enough to grant me a, a whole year of leave, um, it was a, a module called Psychology of Internet Behavior, which I teach, to our BSc in Web Design and Development students. And, uh, and it, it, although um, some of the pages that the students worked on related to internet addiction disorder or online gambling or um, online dating and these kinds of things. Uh, there were mainly also uh, quite a large number of, of, of pages that they worked on that had nothing to do with, with this because they were more focused on, on the interaction and the behavior in itself and observing that. Uh, from, what's it, two or three weeks, well, later on this year, uh, whenever this academic year supposedly starts, uh, we'll, be, we'll be introducing this to another group of students uh, who are doing degrees in, in digital art and design. And uh, this is a module called Interaction Experience and Engagement, which we've previously had all sorts of things on. We've done VJing on this, we've done uh, digital opera on this, we've done machinima on this. Well, why not? Uh, Kittens from the internet. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, so in essence, that's all I, I, I prepared uh, in terms of my presentation, but uh, I'm happy to entertain your questions, though. So, okay, for time, everyone. That's pretty good. Thank you very much. And uh, if if you don't if you don't uh, feel comfortable <coughs> asking me questions now, these are one of the various ways you can contact me. Thanks very much, Tony. Assessment formats across the different subject areas? Uh, no, I don't work. No. Um, for all sorts of reasons. Firstly, uh, the students have uh, different levels of comfort, if you want to call it that, uh, with things like wiki text or, or editing the internet, you know, and then when you try and tell them you're doing this all the time through things like Facebook and explaining the difference between openness and, and not openness and, and all sorts of things, you know, they, they kind of warm up to it. Uh, but no, in essence. The other reason is also uh, I'm a very sloppy Wikidemic. That is to say, I, I learn on the job. Uh, so I, I learn from, from, from doing it, clearly. You know? So from year to year, we improve it. We, we take in the, the feedback from the students and you know, if they felt we spent too much time on something and wanted more time on something else, we adjust that uh, the following year. Uh, so, no. And another question, that's all right. Have you had any support from any Wikimedia organizations or the Wikimedia community? In, in, in what, kind, what kind of support, though? Well, any kind of... Well, I did mention the, the Wikimedia UK chapter. Yeah. Uh, uh, sending me to India yeah. uh, to to share with uh, with uh, Wikipedians there uh, um, 
the, the, their experiences with the with the uh, Wikipedia education program in India, which is which is quite extensive. Uh, you know, as I'm sure Eddie can, can tell you some more about that. Um, and so, in, in having those exchanges uh, with with the, the campus investors, with even with some of the students, you know, these are insights that make my uh, delivery here even less consistent than it had been previously because I came and I changed things. Now I, I, I wanted to Indianize it, if you will. Uh, so yeah, I mean mainly mainly that, but uh, for the most part, no, just uh, uh, from ordinary Wikipedians, for the most part, just grief. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So to expand on Chris's point, you're saying um, we've heard about what the Americans are doing. They've got um, um, the Americans were we were told we've got um, five people working. I think Jim's got five people working. We've got Annie who's doing this work in San Francisco, and you're managing to do it all by yourself. But no, not not quite by myself. I do have a colleague who's also a lecturer who's involved in in the delivery right. and the assessment to some of this, and I did have to. Uh, PhD students assist me with the labs. Right. But what I'm trying to do is, is, is I think what Chris was alluding to, we've got um, a system that we're developing where we're getting with the volunteers, etc. to help. And with a fan here, the university is managing to do it pretty much by themselves. Well, yes. I mean, what has helped is, I have to say, the tea house has been a great help. The tea house has been a great help, and uh, my my previous networking with other Wikipedians. I mean, you know, I was being facetious and saying, you know, that from from other Wikipedians know nothing but grief. Uh, some of the uh, 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 Wikipedians in India, uh, you know, that that actually I, I, I met physically with in, in India. Yeah, they they got involved. We're also you know Facebook friends and we tweet each other and, and this kind of stuff. So so if you will. I had one or two campus ambassadors, but they're based in India, uh, uh, which, uh, which kind of worked and kind of did it. Um, it worked because of the time difference, that is to say, I'm not awake when my students are. You know, I'm a middle-aged man when they are. Um, and, and the other thing is, uh, you know, they, they, the students uh, they couldn't really bother them except through uh, Wikipedia because it's not like they're on campus and they're going to go and find them during office hours or find them in the bar or something, you know, and, and pick up a conversation with them when they, no, I'm not, I'm not a Wikipedia ambassador now, now I'm having a pint, if you don't mind, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes? You talked when you were looking at the assessment criteria. Oh, hello. When you were looking at the assessment criteria, the first one you had for content, you had 20%, and that, besides the presentation, was the lowest. Yeah, sometimes it's even lower than that. Sometimes it's even lower than that. So on, on the psychology of internet behavior module, uh, it, content was just 10%, and the uh, engagement was 50%, if I, if I remember correctly. And uh, the reason for that, and I, as I said, you know, because these are web design and development students, uh, it, it, their their interest is in is in things other than you know writing a page about a particular topic, but rather you know how the interaction and the behavior uh, goes on in a particular environment. Two more. It's down. Yeah. Um, thanks, Tony. Uh, I just want to pick up something that um, I know people have been talking about in relation to Wikipedia for quite a while, which is the gender balance. Um, and there are lots of reasons why the general gender balance is as it is. But have you got anything to say about your students in terms of the gender balance, um, or rather, the, did, did the different genders approach the wiki work in different ways, or was there no difference? Yes, uh, we, our gender balance is more or less as I'm about to describe. We have more almost exclusively uh, female students on our, on our theater performance programs. And we have mostly male students almost exclusively on our BSc Web Design and Development. Uh, um, because there, there are different degrees, I'm not sure if the interaction is different because they're coming from different backgrounds and they have different academic interests, or whether it's because of the gender. Uh, within the same cohorts where 
you know, we have males and females clearly in both uh, programs. Um, I would say that um, uh, I didn't see a particular difference, but then, it, then again, perhaps I'm not too observant when it comes to these things. You know, I see a student and their number as far as I'm concerned. Currently, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not good looking at how nice they smell or whether, you know, uh, they're drunk or not. Uh, so, so, no, I mean, it, it, I mean, again, I'm being silly because I am silly. <laughs> But seriously, so no, I, I don't, I don't know that there's a particular difference. Uh, but then again, perhaps it's, it's, it's more of a, a, a complex thing in, in the sense as to begin with, you know, what expectations they bring to it rather than, than anything else, and that kind of uh, is, is already fed into into the whole equation through the program that they've selected. So I would expect a, a student who's doing a BSc in web design and development to be very different from a student who's doing a BA in theater performance, regardless of whether they're male or female. Whether I would expect uh, two students on the same program to be very different from each other simply because they're male or female, uh, honestly, I think the difference is relatively negligible. You know? And uh, in some cases, they're still too young to tell apart. <laughs> oh, okay, we have more questions. Can I just a quick follow-up to that? Have you found that you are have you found that students have already been editing before they come to your class? No, for the most part, no. Zero. No, I've only had one student out of a total of, what was it, perhaps 140 students that have engaged with these workshops. Could I just ask, do you assess people individually or is there any group element? In ah, yes, assessment? very good question. And can you give some advice about that? Because I, I think okay. that's quite tricky. Okay. So, um, because I was working with module specs that were pre-written like two years ago or in the previous century or in the time of Queen Victoria or something, these things were, you know, I had to have group work in this particular module. Uh, but they have to be individually assessed. So all of the students are individually assessed regardless of what program they're on and regardless of which module they're doing. They're all, they all get an individual mark. However, for the most part, I won't say 100% because, but I would say a good 90, 95% of the students have worked at least in pairs, at least in pairs. Um, in most cases, when they're working on the same page, for example, they take different aspects of the same page. And they're, so the, someone's working on you know, a particular paragraph and someone's working on sourcing an image, for example, or, or something like that, the, the, depending. Uh, in other cases uh, that, that we had, we had students working together on related pages, for example. You know, so uh, that we had the, the two students, one was working on Laurel, the other one was working on Harvey, for example, you know, and, and, and making sure that things are cross-linked and, and that kind of stuff. Um, does that answer your question? Well, what I want, yes, but also, do they end up... You know, I mean, I use the wiki within our BLE, and there's always an issue of the individual contribution and then the group mark yeah. and having to pass both components. Do you have anything like that? Uh, no, because for the most part, this is the, the lesser assignment in the module. That is to say, um, it's normally never worth more than 30% of the mark for the entire module. Uh, and so, so no, I mean you know this is this is the first assignment that they do in in many of the modules, although not in all of them. We have it during the first during the first month or during the first six weeks. <coughs> it's, it's a full semester uh, module, and so you know it, it's it's front loaded in the sense of, of doing something and, and getting them going rather than waiting till the end of the semester to get a, an assessment really, isn't it? Okay, thank you. Shall we end that session there? And we want to thank you very much. For thank the you. Time.